Good afternoon, everybody. It is a uh, slightly cooler day here in Ohio. Adjust the camera just a smidge for you. And um, my stand is going to fall over. Now it's going to be weird. Anyway, um, <laughs> welcome to another tasting video for the Uncanny Spirits Club. And um, today is pretty special. I know my last video, I did a five scotch comparison between five different expressions of Brooklady, uh scotch whiskey. Today it's a little bit more modest, but not by much. This is a triple tasting, and it is bourbon versus bourbon versus bourbon. So if you guys have been waiting for me to do a good bourbon video, here you go. Your prayers have been answered. So... Now, one of these I have tasted before. The other two I have not. So I'm interested in seeing how they compare to one another. Uh, they all have a bit of a story to them. Um, I'm going to show you them one by one first before I actually crack them open and do the comparison. The first one is Lead Slingers. Lead Slingers Bourbon Whiskey. And the lighting in here is kind of iffy. Let me see if I can kind of help that out a little bit. There we go. Um, Lead Slingers is a, uh, is a bourbon that I have seen advertised a bunch online, and I got really interested in it. Um, they have a story on the back. They say it is veteran-owned. Uh, Lead Slinger's Whiskey was founded in 2013 by seven combat veterans. Tired of people afraid to support the Second Amendment, the LSW team was focused on bringing a quality bourbon whiskey to freedom-loving, like-minded individuals. Now, regardless of your politics, that's all up to you. Um, I, uh, I do myself like a, a bit of freedom and a bit of liberty, although I'm critical of some other things political-wise, but you know what? We all have our feelings and all that kind of stuff, and that's not what these videos are about. So, um, I like a bourbon, or any spirit, really, that has a good story behind it, and that has people who are passionate about it, and people who are really into it, and um, regardless of how you might feel about these folks, uh, they obviously care a lot about what they're doing, and, uh, and I appreciate that in a product. So, that's Lead Slingers, and I know a few of your watchers also have been interested and finding out what that is like. I had to special order that, as I usually have to special order most things um, that are unique. I could not find it in my area of Ohio. That does not necessarily mean it's not here, but um, I had to order it. And this, I believe, is a $40 price point. $40 price point, um, 80 proof, $40 price point, full size 750 milliliters. Next. Cedar Ridge, Iowa Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And this I'm excited about because you guys may have seen me talk about it before. Uh, Cedar Ridge is the distiller that paired with Slipknot member Sean Cran, also known as Clown, for the Slipknot Iowa Number no. 9 whiskey in both the regular and the reserve. And so this is the distiller that creates that, but this is their own home brew. This is the non-branded um, regular Cedar Ridge stuff. And um, it's super interesting. It's uh, it's aged a minimum of three years, so it's a young whiskey, a young bourbon. It's 86 proof, so not super, super ridiculous on the proof there. And um, it is made from 74% corn and 25%, uh, I believe, um, is uh, the other grain. I don't remember what if it's a barley or, or what it is, but um, yeah, 74% corn, so it's a corn whiskey, corn mash whiskey. And um, Iowa really, you, you don't think too much about Iowa being big in the bourbon scene, but these guys do some good work. Um, they make this, they make the Slipknot, they also make another one called the Quintessential American Whiskey which is their limited edition high end and it's not a bourbon it's it's more whiskey and uh, it's got peat it's a peated whiskey 
which is uh, really super interesting. And that I've had before, but I've not done a tasting video for, so keep an eye on that in the future. But that's the Cedar Ridge Iowa Straight Bourbon Whiskey. That's going to be the second thing I'm going to taste today. The third thing I'm going to taste today is the one I've had before. And this is the Small Batch 1792. Now this stuff, it's in a nice bottle. It's uh, it's super interesting. It's it's Kentucky bourbon, Kentucky straight uh, bourbon, and this is um, the highest proof that I have on deck today. This is ninety three point seven proof, so this is a, a heavy hitter. I really like this stuff, and when I get to the tasting, I'm going to explain why. Because as long as it still tastes like it did the last time I tasted it. It's it's unique for a bourbon. It really stands out for me, and I'm a big, big fan. And they have the small batch. They also have um, uh, cask strength out there. I haven't seen it in my local area. But this I was able to find locally. I'm able to get this at the grocery store. It is pretty popular, though. It's not always in stock. I'll go there, and I might see one bottle, maybe two at that. Um, and then other times I'll just see an empty sticker on the shelf where... It was supposed to be so this is something that people really enjoy around here and uh, so if you're trying to get a bottle it can be a little elusive the other two are both special order cedar ridge you can get straight from their website and uh, and they will ship here to ohio and the lead slingers i believe i ordered that from cask cartel um cask cartel is a little I'm not super happy all the time with their prices. I think sometimes they're priced a little bit high because they carry a lot of things that are billed as rare and hard to find. I think they bank on that a little bit, and I think they mark them up just a smidge, and I'm not always very pleased with it. But in this case, they were running a free shipping deal if you bought uh, two or more bottles of Diplomatico rum, which rum is not usually my speed these days, but the other half of my household... Um, really enjoys rum and really liked the Diplomatico. So I got her a couple of bottles of that for the free shipping, threw in a bottle of this, and I also threw in a bottle of something else that it looks like it's on back order. So I guess I'll be waiting to see if that comes in before I get too excited about it. So, anyway, let's get into... Oh, price point. Price point, by the way. The, um, the Cedar Ridge bourbon, uh, the Lead Slingers was, was about 40 the Cedar Ridge bourbon was in the neighborhood of uh, 55 60 I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, the 1792 was in the neighborhood of about 55 60 So not necessarily cheap. Um, not necessarily cheap. The Lead Slingers is the, the lowest price of the three. But since you have to special order it, you might get bit on shipping. So let's pop the cork here. Nice satisfying pop. Mm. Interesting brown sugary kind of smell to it. A little bit of ethanol. A little bit of that that um, kerosene effect that I talk about sometimes, that, that nail polish remover smell. Which isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it gives off a, a, a strong alcohol smell, but the taste covers up that. A little bit of caramel notes in there, caramel brown sugar. Now the color, as you can see, this is probably the lightest colored of the three. It's a nice bourbon color. It's a nice, uh, nice reddish brown. Let's pour some into my little tin cup. Pop that back on. Now the um, now Lead Slingers is distilled by Scissor Tail Distillery, which uh, I don't know if I've ever had anything from them, but I'll have to look them up after this. And uh, it is from Oklahoma, Oklahoma bourbon whiskey. I don't know how much I've had from Oklahoma before. Not much, or I'd remember it probably. All right, Lead Slingers, Lead Slingers bourbon whiskey. Mm -hmm. Very typical bourbon kind of taste to it. A little more of an alcohol taste 
than I prefer. I prefer a little bit more flavor um, overall, but not bad. A bit of sharpness that settles in after it's kind of sat in your mouth a little bit. This is a saliva producer. I can I can kind of feel my mouth watering a little bit. Taste wise, you can definitely taste the grain. It has a little bit of that brown sugar flavor. Not quite as deep as like a molasses kind of taste to it. Not so much on the caramel end as the smell would imply. Almost a bit of corn. Almost a bit of creamed corn. Kind of creamed corn uh, taste to it. Settles nicely. Um, it, it settles nicely in the palate. That first drink had a bit of um, it, it had a bit of sharpness to settle, but then that went away, and it leaves a nice, satisfying um, alcohol-induced numbing effect. Which a lot of the ones that I, I do review do have a bit of a numbing effect because of the proof. But um, and sometimes that's really distracting. Sometimes that takes away from the taste because it, it numbs your taste buds too much. So subsequent tastes aren't don't really live up to the first one. But this is nice and subtle. This is very subtle. Um, this is a nice sipping whiskey. Very nice sipping whiskey. I can see this being something that I could pull out just nightly and just have a little bit of a, a drink every night. Um, a nice little sipper. Let's continue in that here a little bit. Yeah, not bad. That'd be really good with a with a, a an ice cube. I like to have at least um, with my bourbon. I tend to like having an ice cube. I don't like having full on the rocks. I don't want to dilute it too much. But one ice cube to kind of take the edge off a little bit, kind of tame the fieriness a little bit. That's not bad. Uh, it is a bit much on on the alcohol taste. That ethanol nail polish remover. Um, kind of taste than uh, than I would prefer, but it's not bad. It's not so bad that it's distracting. It's not so bad that it overpowers the rest of the flavor. So I like it. I like it. It's very light for a bourbon, I think. Uh, and that could just be because it's lower proof. It's 80 proof. Um, a lot of your bourbons can get up into the 90s and, and high hundreds and things. Uh, mid to high hundreds. So I do like that it's understated, that it doesn't overwhelm you. Um, I could easily probably go through this bottle in a few days if I really worked hard at it. I might not feel too good after those days were over, but um, it's not something that you take a little bit of and you're kind of like, whew, I'm going to wait before I fill up again. No, it's pretty good. And it'd be good to have with a, with a, with a nice meal, like maybe a cookout kind of thing, like a barbecue. Um, have some burgers and some hot dogs and stuff and slam back a little bit of this. Um, it's a nice easy sipper. Very nice easy sipper. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I'm glad I got it. I'm very glad I got it. <sighs> Clear the palate. It's affecting my tongue already. Clear the palate a little bit with some water. If you're going to do a tasting, um, it's always good to have something to keep your palate cleaned between drinks so that you don't get too much bleed through of what you're drinking. Otherwise, it gets to be difficult to, to really make a decision on what was better than another. Sometimes you, you just can't. Sometimes people don't like to choose what's better and what's worse. They just like the individual tastes. But even then, if you don't clear that palate out either with some, some water or, or maybe like a cracker or some, some bread, some good crusty bread, then... Um, you're, you don't pick up a lot of the good flavors between the bourbons, and you really don't get to enjoy them to their fullest. So always have a palate cleanser nearby if you're going to do a tasting. Some good advice for me. All right, let's get into the Cedar Ridge. Little understated little pop. Mmm, stronger smell to it. A lot more of that kind of ethanol 
kind of nail polish remover smell. And that could be because it's a higher proof. It's not that much of a higher proof. Um, this is 86 versus 80 proof. Hmm. It's hard to tell what other flavors might be in there just from the smell. The, um, the Slipknot number 9 was a very complex taste to it, especially the difference between the regular and the reserve. The reserve was aged a little bit longer. Um, it's not too much different from that regard. I believe they're the same proof. But it, it picked up some more from the barrel that the, that the uh, original didn't have. So it imparted a little bit more smoky flavor. Um, so this, I can't tell much from the smell. Which isn't always a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. But um, I'm going to let my taste buds do the talking on that. Now the color on this, as you can see, is much darker. This is a deep red, uh, reddish gold. Not quite a rose gold, but like a, a nice reddish ruby gold kind of look to it. You can tell a lot, not necessarily from strength, but also the barrels used. And this cork, this is a tight cork here, so it's going to keep that locked in pretty well. All right, so. Hmm. Once it's out of the bottle, I'm getting a little bit fruit, a little bit of a fruit smell. A little bit of a fruit smell, like a, um, like a stone fruit kind of thing. Hmm. Well, here we go. Cedar Ridge, Iowa Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Hmm. Much deeper flavor than the Lead Slingers. Right off the bat, I'm getting sweet bread. Like a sweet bread kind of taste. Not like a fruitcake necessarily, but like a, almost like a beer bread. Like a, like a, a real, a real sweet beer bread kind of taste to it. Very yeasty. Not as sharp as the Lead Slingers. It felt like it was going to be when it first hit the tongue, but then it dissolved pretty quickly. A little drier. A little drier than the Lead Slingers. I'm not getting quite as much saliva production from this one as I did from the Lead Slingers. But yeah, it, it reminds me of a sweet bread, like a, a, a thick, doughy um, sweet bread. Like a cornbread. Like a cornbread. And there's different kinds of cornbread. You get the cornbread that's fully baked, and then you get that spoon bread, where it's cornbread, where it's still it's real soft, and you kind of spoon it like a little scoop onto your plate, uh, which is my favorite kind of cornbread, where it's not quite fully like in, in a, like a loaf or something. Yeah. Cornbread. Cornbread. Which would make sense, because it's distilled from corn. So, let me take another drink of that and see if that holds. Mm-hmm. Because it hits sharp. It's got that bourbon sharpness that hits you first. Once you start getting through that, cornbread. Very much cornbread. I like that, too. That would be great for uh, for a barbecue as well, because then you can actually have some cornbread, and you can actually <laughs> eat your cornbread while you drink your cornbread. Nah, uh, nah, uh, nah. Uh. Cornbreadception? I don't know. Never saw that movie, actually. So, um... Mm hmm A little more syrupy than the Lens Thingers. A little bit thicker. Um, so it kind of, it feels a little bit more viscous on the, on the tongue. Very good, though. Very good. Um... I can't say whether I like it better or or less 
than the lead slingers. I think they both stand pretty good on their own. Um, I think they'd both be great choices for uh, for a family style outdoor meal like a barbecue or or a picnic or something like that, where where somebody's grilling burgers or, or sausages or something. I think it'd be great for that kind of environment uh, with the cornbread and um, with some macaroni salad, potato salad, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Next family reunion, there you go. Cedar Ridge. <coughs> so, before I clean my palate, actually, I have a little bit left in the cup. Mm. It's good. Very good. Very good. Both of them very unique. The Lead Slingers versus the Cedar Ridge. They have their own uh, taste profiles that really set them both apart. I think the Cedar Ridge is a little more flavorful. Um, the Lead Slingers, I think, is a little bit more easily drinkable. But they're a good balance. They're a good balance between the two of them. So, two down, one to go. Small batch, 1792. And like I said, I've had this before already, so this is kind of cheating, but I haven't ever described it to you guys. Very subtle, very subtle mine, a little uh, cork pop there. Oh, and you can even smell, you can even smell it. It has a, a hint, it's got that ethanol smell, but it also has a hint of banana. And you might be like, banana in my bourbon? Are you sure? Trust me on this. Trust me on this. You got a little bit of banana smell. Mm. If you're going to be making tropical drinks and you don't want to use rum and you don't want to use vodka or tequila, use this for some kick. That banana. It's got a banana scent to it. And, just wait here. Now this is the darkest one of the three also. It's the darkest, deepest red. Very, very red. Um, and I don't know if that's owing to just the fact that it's a higher proof, or maybe it was left in the barrels the longest. It's hard to say. But it's a very, very deep red. Mmm. Good stuff. Oh my goodness. Yep. Banana. Trust me on that. Trust me on that. Here we go. 1792 small batch. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. This has the least sharpness to it. And what I mean by that is that it has the least amount of fumy alcohol attack on your mouth. It's the smoothest of the three, absolutely, by a long shot. Um, and you get a really complex mix of flavors in there. You get a little bit of that banana that you smell. You're getting a little bit of that in the taste. You get almost some, some wintergreen, some mint, which you would think, that's a weird taste to go with a banana. Are you sure you're, you're not just like... Trust me on this. It fits. It all fits together. Um, and it settles very, very nicely on the palate. Very nicely. It's not... It, it, it doesn't produce too much saliva. It's not too dry. The, of the three, the Lead Slingers uh, produces the most saliva, so it's best for meals. Um, that you're mouth-watering and things. But, uh, but this is a nice, subtle... Mm. those flavors are excellent like this out of the three is my personal pick the other two are great Like, don't get me wrong they're excellent and I'm a big fan of Cedar Ridge already like I feel kind of bad but the 1792 this is a different level this is excellent stuff 
and I can see why it's so popular and why it's usually sold out whenever I go to the store. Um, it has a very smooth, very mild mouthfeel. It gives you that, that banana, a little bit of wintergreen, and all, all kinds of other little things that are in there that just, they're really satisfying. It is If you're a bourbon drinker and you like really smooth bourbon, that's a little bit higher proof, but aren't dominated by that alcohol taste that a higher proof can give you, or that like kick in the in the mouth that you can sometimes get from a, a first sip of a high proof bourbon. The 1792 is exceptional. It's it's very smooth. It's delicious stuff. I this will be the bottle I'll be sipping on later probably. Um, the other two probably s sometime this week, but. Um, yeah, that 1792, I'll probably have a few more of these uh, before I pass out this evening. Oh, it's great stuff. Nice bit of sourness. Out of the three, the 1792 is going to be the best mixer. Which is interesting, because a lot of times in a mixer, you don't want it to be too overpowering for the other ingredients. So you don't really necessarily want something that's super high proof. But, being the highest proof of the three, the 1792, those flavors, just they, they work so well, and they would work very well in a good mixed drink. The other two, I would see, uh, I would see the Cedar Ridge making some really good old fashions. Um, maybe the same with the lead slingers. The lead slingers, I think, would be best just straight up, always. I think I would just take that straight up, no frills, nothing special. Just take that. It's a good straight bourbon without having to worry about anything else. Have it on an ice cube or have it neat. The Iowa Cedar Ridge. The Cedar Ridge, I think, would make a good, uh, like I said, um, I forgot what I just said just a few minutes ago. Um, it'd be good with 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 old fashions. There it was. Got to kickstart the old brand. Um, a good old fashioned would work with Cedar Ridge, but the 1792 has so much potential because it's so good. It, it's great on its own, and you take some of that. If you were to mix that with some rum in a tropical drink with some nice uh, tropical fruit, uh, maybe a banana themed uh, drink of some kind, Ugh. oh man, it'd be so good, it would be delicious, maybe some coconut, uh, like a pina colada, oh, it'd be so good, it'd be so good, trust me on that, trust me on that 100%, I know when you hear somebody say trust me, you always have to think, Hmm? Trust you? Why? Believe me, this is excellent stuff. The 1792 is the my favorite out of all these three, and it is probably getting to be one of my favorite bourbons of all time. And I've had a few other things. I've had Michters, I've had Wellers, I've had uh, um, Buffalo Trace, I've had um, Sazerac, which is good, also very, very good. Um, what other bourbons have I had? I've had a lot of different bourbons. Horse Soldier, um, a lot of stuff. And the 1792, I think, is my favorite bourbon of all time. You heard it here first. Seventeen ninety two small batch. No, I haven't had... There are other types. I know they have other kinds. Not very many. I, they're very specific. They have um, they have the small batch, and then they have, I, I believe, like a barrel strength or a cast strength or something like that, uh, which I have not had yet. Um, and I think they have another one that is um, more mass produced. But for some reason, we don't get that here in Ohio. I don't know. We only used to get that I see. We usually get the small batch in my part of Ohio. I know if I were to go to a place like Cincinnati or Columbus or Toledo, maybe there'd be a lot more to choose from. I know Columbus for sure has a lot more of a selection. Um, I'm part of a group online 
on Facebook called the uh, Central Ohio Whiskey Society. Those are the cows, as they're proud to say. There's you guys a shout out. Glad to be a member. And um, a lot of those guys go to Columbus and get a lot of really rare, interesting things. Like they get Blantons, they get Eagle Rare, they get um, Angel's Envy, they get uh, um, all kinds of things that you just simply do not get in my little town of Canton, Ohio. So there's a lot of things that I could taste, and I can't because I just can't get them here. I have to special order them. And the prices that I see them post about getting them in person in Columbus versus me trying to order them, there's a vast difference. The secondary market is ridiculous, especially on Blanton's. And I've, I've talked about this before. I've talked about how Blanton's is just ridiculously overpriced on the secondary market, where you can get it here in, in Columbus, Ohio, for much, much cheaper. I just can't justify a, a three to four hour trip to Columbus just to pick up a bottle. If I had something else going on out there, I'd stop at a few a few stores and see what I could find, but um, I am not often in Columbus. I am not often in Cincinnati. I am not often in these big cities. I don't, I mean, Cleveland is the closest to me at maybe 45 minutes, and I don't often go there either. Um, I don't really have much of a reason to usually, so... But uh, as far as what I can find around here, I will stick by it for the foreseeable future. 1792, small batch, best bourbon ever. Personal opinion. So what do we got here? We did a comparison here. Lead slingers. Great stuff. Good for a barbecue, good for a cookout, good uh, easy sipper. You can sip on that all afternoon. Good stuff. Cedar Ridge, also good for a barbecue or a get-together. Bit of a slower sipper. Maybe good in an old-fashioned, if you're looking for a good cocktail. King of the Hill, 1792. Small batch. Best of the best mix it into a tropical drink you will not be disappointed you will not be disappointed okay and I have to say again trust me trust your boy spider okay if you are a bourbon fan you will not be disappointed I don't want to guarantee that, because anytime you say you guarantee things, people will come back and be like, well, I don't know, this was as good as whatever. I think you owe me something for your guarantee. Well, it's, I got nothing. You can have some water. Want some water? Got some water. Feel better? I'm drinking from the opposite side of the glass from you, because I don't want to catch any of you. Anyway. That's what I got for you today. Lead Slingers, great. Cedar Ridge, great. 1792, The King. Absolute number one best. Okay? And that's all I got for you today. That's all I got. I'm going to probably go and uh, drink some more of the 1792 because it is so good. <laughs> so anyway... You guys have a great day. Remember to drink responsibly. Don't pound a whole bottle of lead slingers and then go driving around thinking that you're cool stuff. You will not be cool stuff if you do that. Stay home. Have a good time. Enjoy your bourbon. Till next time. Cheers. Thought I hit the button there. Here we go.